Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to help you interpret atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and supraventricular tachycardia. Are you ready? Let's begin! Before anything else, I would like to give a shout out to my friends all over the world, especially to Miss Neth Ablania, and also to one of the smartest and most compassionate doctors that I've known, Dr. Jika Tarangoy. Hi! Before I proceed, have you watched the part one of this cardiac arrhythmia series? If not yet, then watch it first. So now let's proceed to the topic. Let's talk about atrial fibrillation. Now, it is very important to know about atrial fibrillation because it could lead to stroke and heart failure. In a normal sinus rhythm, the sinus node generates electrical impulses and conducts them throughout the heart's muscle so that it can contract and pump blood. In atrial fibrillation, electrical impulses fire off from different sites in the atria in a disorganized manner, making the atria quiver or fibrillate. This results in irregularly irregular ventricular response. So the characteristics of atrial fibrillation are absent P waves and irregular rhythm. On top is a picture of a normal sinus rhythm and at the bottom, it is a picture of atrial fibrillation. Take a look at the P waves in atrial fibrillation. Is there a visible, rounded and upright P wave? No. Take a look at the rhythm. Is the rhythm regular or irregular? Irregular. Therefore, that is atrial fibrillation. Now, there are three responses found in atrial fibrillation. We have atrial fibrillation in slow ventricular response, which is known as heart rate of less than 60 Another one is atrial fibrillation in moderate ventricular response with a heart rate of 60 to 100 and atrial fibrillation in rapid ventricular response with a heart rate of greater than 100. In atrial fibrillation, the atria or the upper chambers of the heart contract irregularly. This results in blood pooling in the atria. If this happens, Clots may develop, which is also called thrombus, and if thrombus develops, it may travel to an artery of the brain, and this may lead to cardioembolic stroke. This is very alarming, and that is one major, I mean, major, major problem found in atrial fibrillation. The usual standard treatment for atrial fibrillation are blood thinners, rate controllers, and rhythm controllers. Blood thinners such as the antiplatelets, clopidogrel, prasugrel, aspirin to and anticoagulants such as the bigatran prevent clot formation or treat an existing clot formation. For the rate controllers, we have beta blockers, calcium channel blockers, and digoxin. Beta blockers slow the heart rate, whereas calcium channel blockers slows the heart rate and reduces the muscle cell contraction. And digoxin is cardiac glycoside, increases the heart contractility. However, it slows a person's cardiac rate, normal serum level 0.5 to 2. For our rhythm controller, we have potassium channel blockers, specifically amiodarone. Amiodarone slows the disorganized electrical activity that makes atrial fibrillation. In cases when the patient has atrial fibrillation in rapid ventricular response or a heart rate of greater than 100 and the patient is exhibiting signs of hypotension, altered mental state, chest discomfort, and other signs of shock. Synchronized cardioversion at 120 to 200 joules by phasic is utilized. This can help restore the normal sinus rhythm. And this is per physician's advice. 
Identifying atrial fibrillation is very easy, right? You simply have to know what is the normal sinus rhythm and compare it with the characteristics of atrial fibrillation, which are irregular rhythm and absent E waves. If you can compare the two, then you can really identify what atrial fibrillation is. That is why it is very important to watch the first part, the first part of my cardiac arrhythmia series. Also, let's try to relate atrial fibrillation in our lives. So, if you have the right people in your life, then your heart beats normally like dub 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 <laughs> but if you are with the wrong people in your life your heart beats irregularly like dub 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 so i hope you get that um let's now proceed to atrial flutter Atrial flutter is a common tachycardia that results from a rapid electrical circuit in the atrium. During atrial flutter, instead of the electrical activity starting in the sinus node, electrical activity begins in a large circuit caused by an impulse that travels around in a localized self-perpetuating loop causing the atria to beat very rapidly. Ventricular rate or heart rate is lower because of the refractory properties of the AV node. The AV node blocks part of the impulses from reaching the ventricles. The atrial flutter is very easy to identify. You simply have to know that there is a sawtooth pattern or the flutter waves. If you know that, then you can readily interpret the atrial flutter. Apart from that, we also have rhythm that is usually regular, but it can also be irregular. The atrial flutter is easy, right? Now, let's proceed to supraventricular tachycardia. The SVT is a rapid narrow complex tachycardia with a rate greater than 150. It is caused by small re-entrant pathway that directly involves the AV node. P waves may be buried in the QRS complex, visible after the QRS complex, or very rarely visible before the QRS complex. QRS complex is usually narrow of, and the rate is more than 150. The rhythm is regular. Supraventricular tachycardia include pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic treatment. For our pharmacologic treatment, the most common drug is adenosine and it is usually the drug of choice for SVT or supraventricular tachycardia. And for the non-pharmacologic treatment, we have vagal maneuvers such as coughing or straining. We also have carotid massage, but this is per doctor's advice and we, we have synchronized cardioversion. Identifying atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, and supraventricular tachycardia is very easy, right? You simply have to know what a normal sinus rhythm is. If you know that, then you can easily identify atrial fibrillation which has absent P waves and irregular rhythm, atrial flutter which has sawtooth pattern, and supraventricular tachycardia which has an a regular rhythm with a heart rate of greater than 150 and a P wave that is buried in the T wave. Please follow my Facebook page Marie's Lomarda vlog and also if you like or learn a lot from this vlog please show some love by giving it a thumbs up also click the subscribe button and also tick the, not the notification bell for you to be able to get updates on my new vlogs I dedicate this song to all of you who are on the process of reaching their dreams I can live, I can love, I can reach the heavens above. I can write what is wrong, I can sing just any song. I can dance, I can fly, and touch the rainbow in the sky. I can 